I'm joined now by another eyewitness to the shooting of Michael Brown. Michael Brady joins us now from Ferguson. Uh, Michael Brady, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, could you tell us where you were when you first became aware that something was happening on that street? I was actually in my bedroom and I hear an altercation outside. I happened to look out the window and I see an altercation, um, some kind of tussling in the window. And um, right after that, I, I actually just seen him just takes off from the vehicle. Um, he also had a friend with him. Um, his friend, um, he was actually like in front of the vehicle, like five feet away from it though, in front of the passenger side of the vehicle. And like I said, they both just takes off from the vehicle after the little tussle in the window. And they just takes off and his friend runs behind um, a white two-door vehicle that was sitting off to the side. And um, the officer immediately just gets out the vehicle and he just started shooting. So when he started shooting, um, he was actually taking large steps to him, to Michael Brown that was at the window. And I noticed that um, he wasn't shooting at his friend because he walked past the car. So when he walked past the car, um, I noticed, you know, that was my time to run out to the front door. Uh, when I ran out to the front door, um, that's when I turned my phone on. Um, when I went outside, he was actually balled up like he was hit in the stomach is what I thought. Um, so as he was kind of balled up, he was going down actually. And um, the cop actually just shot out about four or five shots at him and then he hit the ground and that was it. And uh, when you say uh, you saw an altercation at the car, mm -hmm. was it already underway? Uh, did you see it begin or was it already happening when you looked at the car? It was already happening. Okay. And could you see Michael Brown's hands during that altercation? Yes. Where, where were his hands? Uh, most likely through the window. Okay, through the window. And you, you, you just uh, made sort of a, a punching gesture. Do, would you say, could you tell from your angle if Michael Brown was uh, punching? Um, I, I really can't tell. I just know, um, I seen, probably the cop arm was probably doing the same thing. You know, I just seen some arms going through the window. So that's why I was doing this. But um, most likely I would say that Mike Brown arms was through the window. Um, and could you, maybe could you the see cop the, arms? Are, yeah, I was going to ask, could you see the police officer's arms? Yeah, I seen his arms moving also. Okay. And um, the, the, the video that you recorded at that time, uh, there's some, we don't, we don't have the video ready to play. You gave it to us earlier. We appreciate that. But we got, we got uh, the audio of what you said on that video. And it begins with you saying he just got shot. He just ran up to the car. He ran up to the car. Uh, he was punching on him. Um, who was punching on who, or what did you mean by he was punching on him? Well, um, like I said, when I first looked out the window and saw that, that's just what I assumed that, you know, he was punching on him, you know, because that's, you know, that's not normal which, for which, anybody to be, you know, at a cop's window. So I just assumed. Okay, so w were you, w was your angle on Michael Brown's back or at a spot where, you could see uh, his profile leaning into the car, his side or his back or his front um, or what? I couldn't see um, his face while at the window, but um, like I said, he, he took off running. I seen the side, you know, the, his whole side body just takes off from the vehicle. So uh, basically I just seen the side of his face just running away from the vehicle. Okay. and. Um, and just to go back to this altercation, at that time, uh, y you saw the, the altercation uh, that was punching or some kind of punching, uh, and, and then Michael Brown runs away from the car? Yes. And did, did you hear a shot fired before Michael Brown ran away from the car? 
No, that's what I didn't hear. Um, Cause like I said, I was still in the window when I, you know, when I, while I was going on. Okay, so you were inside, and so there was a window separating you from the sounds of what was going on out there, or some of the sounds? Yes. And at some point, uh, Michael, in the middle of this, you lose sight of what's going on out there because as I, as I heard what you said, you change your position. You go from that window to somewhere else. Did you leave the apartment and go outside? Yes. And how long did it take you to go from your apartment to outside? How much of the action do you think you missed during, during that move? Um, it, it wasn't long at all, because I took some big steps, you know, going to the front door, you know, so I could really see what's going on. Um, but um, like I said, from the time the officer gets out the car and I noticed that he went past his friend, that was the time for me to go outside, but that was probably uh, less than five seconds, definitely. You know, it didn't take long for me uh, at all to get to the front door. And had, when you, had the officer fired any shots by the time you made your move? Um, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Okay. And uh, what did you see Michael Brown do? You, you saw him run away from the car. And that's the last thing you saw Michael Brown doing before you changed your position was him running away from the car. No, actually, um, he was, the officer was already shooting. He was already shooting. That's why he, when he immediately gets out the car, he just started shooting in his, um, in his shooting position. And like I said, he passed his, um, his police cruiser and he passed the vehicle that his friend also ran to. So that was my time when I thought of, um, he's not shooting at his friends, so he's constantly shooting at the person that was at the window. So that's when I took off to the front door. Okay, and when you got out the front door, what did you see Michael Brown doing then? When I get outside, um, he was actually turned back around facing the officer. And um, like I said, I, I thought he was hit, obviously, because he's now turned around. And um, he was going down. He was bent over with his stomach, with his hands over his stomach, and he was going down on his knees. And um, like I said, it didn't even still look like that he was giving up. You know, it just looked like he was going to go down and, and you know, and just bleed to death. But the officer, before he went down, the officer just lets out three or four more shots at him, and then that's when he hit the ground. And so when you say you got to the front door and you saw him, and he was, he had his arms like that, and he was going down. Uh, would it be yes. fair for me to interpret what you're saying as Michael Brown at that point, uh, do you think that he represented, did it look to you like he represented a threat to the police officer? Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I uh, really when, couldn't hear you. When, you. when you came to the door and you saw Michael Brown uh, beginning to go down, did it seem like he was he was in any way threatening the police officer as he was going down no no um like i said he was already well 20 25 feet away so it didn't look like at all that he was trying to charge at him or anything like that so to be clear are, are you saying when you saw the final shots fired the police officer was 25 feet away from michael brown yes and when the police officer stopped firing and Michael Brown went down on the pavement, how far apart was the police officer from Michael Brown? Um, I said within 20 feet, within 20 feet. Okay, 20, so about 20 feet. 20 feet, still, mm -hmm. still a significant distance. Um, certainly a much longer distance that if, if someone who was unarmed was trying to harm you, if they're 25 feet or 20 feet away from you, you don't yet have anything to worry about, right? I mean, that, that's what we're talking about here. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, I just wanted you to listen to uh, something that another witness said on this program, uh, Tiffany Mitchell, who uh, approached that area in her car and watched uh, the entire thing. She, uh, she, was, she never had to... Uh, 
leave the scene for a moment, uh, you know, as you are lose sight of it as you did. Let's listen, uh, Michael, I hope you can hear it, uh, to what Tiffany Mitchell said. Let's listen to this. As I come around the corner, I hear tires squeaking, and as I get closer, I see Michael and the officer, like, wrestling through the window. Michael was pushing, like, trying to get away from the officer, and the officer was trying to pull him in. Um, as I see this, I pull out my phone because it just didn't look right. You never just see an officer and, a, and someone just wrestling through the window. So as I pull out my phone, the first shot was fired through the window, and I just like try to get out the way. I pull onto the parking lot right beside where the cop car was, and um, that's when Michael like, kind of broke away and started running down the street. The officer gets out of his vehicle and he pursues him. As he's following him, he's shooting at him. And Michael's body jerks as if he was hit. And then he turns around and he put his hands up. And the officer continued to walk up on him and shoot him until he goes all the way down to the ground. Michael Brady, is, is that uh, essentially the what you saw? Well, um, like I said, I, I really didn't see his hands up. But... Right. Um, like, like I said, he probably, um, let me see, um, he, like I said, I, I, I really didn't see his hands up, but like I said, by the time I get outside, it, it just looked like, I just thought that he was hitting his stomach and he was already looking like he was going down. And the officer just lets out a few more shots. So I really did miss the, uh, the hands go up. On that yeah, one. I mean, I think, and, and is, so is that, is that your only, uh, I don't want to call it a disagreement, uh, because it, it isn't, it's something you didn't see that she saw, and it may have happened uh, when you weren't looking, but is that the only uh, difference between your stories at this point, do you think, and what you just heard? Um, no, I mean, my story definitely ain't going to change, so um, um, that's what she saw, and, yeah. I mean, and that's what I saw. Yeah, I mean, they, they, uh, I think the only uh, difference is your choice of words on, uh, you say altercation, you know, that day you said punching, she says wrestling, mm -hmm. uh, those are all pretty close. Uh, you all, and so yeah. um, I just wanted to see if you heard anything uh, that she said. I, I didn't hear anything that she said that differed substantially with what you said, and I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything there. Okay. Okay. Michael Brady, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. I, I know it was difficult there with the thank noise you. around you, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Joy Reid joins me next to discuss what you just heard.